Welcome back to Jeep Dude's YouTube channel. Today we're going to do some wiring on this tackle box rebuild. As you see, I already started doing my daisy chains. You'll have this wire right here, which is the wire coming off the battery. It'll go into the power input on this one. But as you see, I got daisy chains coming off that switch going into the other ones. So what it is, is when you turn on this switch, the power will come down this wire here. And it will turn on my voltmeter. But this switch also gives power to the rest of the switches. So this is like the master switch. This wire right here is coming off the battery, which will get hooked into the power. This is my lighter plug wire, which will go all the way down here to the end. I still got to make a daisy chain for my ground, which is this wire right here that's coming from the battery. It will daisy chain to all the grounds, which will allow us to have our switches to light up when turned on. And then each, these three remaining switches will be for the three different sides for the lights. So, let's get started. I'll start by going ahead and doing the uh, daisy chains. Let me get some tools and I'll join them right back with you. Okay, I'm going to move the camera down so you can see just how I'm starting it down here. So, we just got a piece of black wire for our ground. We're going to start the first one off because we're going to start from here and work over. So the first one's just going to be as simple as, you know, stripping your wire back. I like to twist up the wire to make it a little bit easier going inside the uh, connector here. And I'll get my dikes to crimp them down on. Make sure that none of your wires are coming outside of the uh, connector before you go to crimp it down. Put your wire in and crimp it down. And then from here, because this is going to be the ground, so you'll start your ground. Now I only put this on here so I can get an idea of how long of a wire I need to go to the next hook up here, which will be just right there. So that should be about long enough, so we'll go ahead and cut that there. And I'm going to pull that back off so it makes it a little bit easier for wiring this up. Okay, so we're going to move on. Now we're going to start our daisy chain. Make sure you strip back plenty of wire so you can get both of these wires up inside your connector. So there's the one side. There's the wire that we cut. You want to strip it back once again, making sure that you give yourself plenty to be able to put your connector on. I like to spread it apart where I get the other wire mixed inside so I know that it gets a good connect connection. Twist them up. And then you see how you got your two connections. There's several ways that people do daisy chain for wiring. This is just the way that I like to do it. Okay, you see I got that on there? I'm getting ready to crimp this connection down now. And yeah, there'll be a little bit of wire hanging out for each connection like this. So either you could take some heat shrink and put it over here, or what I'm going to do like I did on these, is I'll just put a dab of hot glue on there, you know, to kind of insulate it once I get fully done. So again, we'll go ahead and do this again. 
That way you know you have your wire spacing for your next one. So the next wire will be about, eh, about right there. So we'll go ahead and cut that about right there. And while we're sitting here, I'm going to go ahead and plug in my hot glue gun. That way it can start eating up. Give me a second while this is heating up and I'll join right back with you. Here's my hot glue gun, by the way. So give me a second and I'll join right back with you once this thing heat, heats up. So I'm going to go ahead and put some glue on here. That way I don't mess up those wires. Okay. So you didn't have to sit there in that long period of waiting for my hot glue gun to, to heat up. I went ahead and edited that part out. So hot glue gun, I'm just going to put a dab on here. Kind of helps hold these wires in place so they don't rip out. Yes, they're crimped down so they shouldn't rip, rip out, but this just helps hold it a little bit better. Once that cools, I'll pull those wires out. And then we can continue. Okay, as you see I already pulled that back off so we're going to get ready to go ahead and do our next connection here. It's just going to be the same thing again. Strip back plenty of wire so you know you got enough on both sides. And again, I just like to make sure that they're intertwined that way. I know that both wires are connected inside this connector. And you put your connector on. And now you have your next one. No. Same deal, I'm going to put a tab of glue on this once I get this other side up. One that kind of helps hold the, keeps the wire to hold the, where they're at. So I'm going to put a tab of glue on there. I'm going to let that cool down before we move. Making daisy chain connections is actually rather easy. And this way I don't have to run five different grounds off my battery. I just run one up and then daisy chain it across. Okay, so let's go ahead and get the length set for our next one. So probably about right there. And let's go ahead and pull those off so we can get them unset. Again, making sure that we strip back enough that way it gets up inside the connector.
Okay. Now that that one's in, we're going to do the same thing. I'll put that up there. That way we can put our touch of glue on this one too to kind of hold that in place. So let me grab my glue gun here. And we'll put that touch of glue on this one. Now for the last one, it's just going to be as simple as I'm going to cut it to length. You know to flip it over, cut it to length, but then we'll go ahead and next one we'll join in the battery ground, coming off the battery then. And then that will complete that daisy chain of ground, same way I did with the power wire coming off this main switch. So through the power editing, you're, you won't have to sit here and be bored while I'm waiting on this hot glue to dry. So I'll join back with you in just a moment. Okay, so I went ahead and I got it up to that far. And before I connect this wire to this last ground, since all my lights need to ground as well, I'm going to wait to connect this last terminal. That way I can just go ahead and connect all the lights into that one ground that's going back down to the battery. So what I'm going to do is I have a wire here. I want to actually take that wire and I want to solder each side together that way it makes one lead going into a switch so like this left side here will go to this switch the back of the tackle box will go to that and then the right side will go to this switch so I'm going to tie these two wires together make one wire feed going in these two wires will get tied together to make one wire feed going in and so forth and so you don't have to sit here through the whole tedious process of me soldering all these wires together I'll go ahead and get them soldered together and then I'll rejoin with you as I'm getting ready to run the wires to where they're going to go. Okay, so I figured I'd stop and give you guys a quick little update. I got these two wires connected for the lights on the back side. As you see, they're connected in the one wire and ran it up. This will go to the switch. This wire here will go to the ground. I actually went ahead and decided to run just a separate ground for all my lights to go into because it'll make it a little bit easier instead of trying to run all these wires into one. So, it just comes down and runs into my connection point where all my grounds meet up. So, I still got to solder these wires together and make one coming in. Solder these together and make one coming in. And then all my grounds will get soldered together into this one ground wire. And then, like I said, it feeds down here to where all my grounds meet up. So, I'm going to go back off camera and work some more on getting these other wires soldered up here. And I'll join back with you shortly. Okay, so I might have got a little carried away with running some wires. As you see, I got that one. It's already plugged in. Got these connected into one wire. It's already plugged in. Same way with here. It's plugged in. Now what I got left to do is, is I got to hook all the ground wires into the one ground. I still got to terminate that wire. Terminate that wire. And then... Also terminate this wire which will complete the daisy chain of ground wires which is that guy right there and then this will pretty much almost be complete so I'm going to go ahead and jump back off camera again and get these soldered up and I'll come back on camera and show you terminating these and these and finishing off that daisy chain of ground wires and I'll be back with you in a moment Alright, so I got them grounds all soldered into one wire running back behind here. Let's go ahead and get this in terminated and that in terminated.
Sometimes when you crimp these down, it closes the inside of these, so you can't actually put them what you're putting them on. Okay, there's that one. We'll go ahead and get this other one terminated now. So the last step now is we got to finish off our daisy chain for the grounds that we created. should be about right there so we'll go ahead and cut that Get that crimped on there now. And once my hot glue gun warms up, I'll put a dab of glue on there too, just like I did the other ones. That way there's no problem, but there it is. That is pretty much complete. You got your wire here that'll go to the positive on the battery. This wire here will go... You can even see what I'm showing you. Let me drop it down here. So this wire here will go to the positive on the battery. And then this wire will go to the negative on the battery. And then all your switches will work accordingly up top. And when I, I'm going to jump off here and let my hot glue gun warm up so I can get that sealed up. And then once I get that done, I'll come back and you'll be seeing me place the battery in here. And we'll show you what everything does. At least up until the broken switches anyways. So I'll be back in a few minutes. Alrighty, so I got all the wiring done on this and went to put the battery in and discovered I had to charge the battery. So I just wanted to give you guys a quick little update. So once the battery gets fully charged up, we'll, I'll go up there and show you how I got each switch wired up and what they run. Except for the one broken one that's completely broken. But until then, 
I don't know if you can see that or not, but this battery is charging. You can kind of see it. There you go. So we definitely got to get this battery charged up a little bit. And then once it gets charged up, like I said, I'll come back and show you guys how everything is working. So, I'll see you back in a few once the battery's charged. Alrighty, so now that the battery's fully charged up, we'll go ahead and hook up the wires. Like I explained earlier, you've seen these two wires left over that wasn't hooked up before I put the battery in. The one goes to the positive side of the battery. And then the other one goes to the negative side of the battery. And that's it for our inside here. Close the lid. You can lock this up now. And of course, when you got this closed, it looks like a regular tackle box. You open it up. There's all your switches. You got your main power switch. Now when you turn this one on, it turns on the... It, up the voltmeter down here which you can see down there which I'll give you guys a closer look here in a little bit and on video that light may look purple but it's actually blue so now when you turn on the first switch it'll turn on these left side lights as you can see it turned on the left side lights then when you turn on this switch right next to it it turns on the lights in the back, which you see those come on. Let's see. And then when you turn on this switch, which I gotta be careful because this switch is kind of broken, it turns on the lights on the other side. Like I said, these may show a purple on camera, which I'm not sure why. At least on my little screen here, they look purple, but these are actually blue. Now, as I said, now, this switch is the main switch. Watch. See, I flip the one switch, it turns everything off. But, I got each side of the lights operating on their own switch, so I don't have to run all three sides. I can select what side I want. This last spot, I went ahead and put what was left of the switch in there so I can get the wires ran. But, I got to get a new switch. This one will actually turn on and off the lighter plug. So give me a second, and I'll get you guys in a better position where you can see that voltmeter. Okay, so here on the right side of this, this is the lighter plug. As you can see, there's the lighter plug. Now on the left side here is the voltmeter and the two USB ports. You got the USB port here above the voltmeter and the USB port below the voltmeter. The reason why I got this voltmeter on here is so I could tell how much uh, charge is still left in my battery and I've ran these lights at the most now for probably about maybe four or five hours on a full charge and this thing did not drop below 12 volts and that was on the old lid so these lights don't pull hardly anything and the reason why I got the USB ports on here or the lighter plug is so you can charge your cell phone and then the lighter plug so you can plug in anything else to it. And that completes the rebuild of my tackle box modifications. If you like seeing these videos, let me know down there in that comment section. Let me Also, click that like button and smash the subscribe button. And as always, have a nice day.